It's cold. It's winter time and you want to know how to take care of your worms in the winter. That's what today's video is all about. What's up you guys? Natalie here and welcome back to Hey It's a Good Life. I am a modern homesteader and worm farmer here in the suburbs learning how to grow food and raise worms as we steward our big old regenerative farm dreams. So nice to meet you, so glad you're here. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so down below. Give this video a like, leave a comment. Those are all free ways to support our channel and I know a lot of you are rooting for us to get to 10K by the end of the year, which is my goal. I love languages gifts. If you wanna give me a gift for Christmas, help me get to 10K, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? shameless, absolutely shameless. But a lot of you guys are rooting for it to happen too and I so appreciate you guys. And I feel like I don't say that enough so I just want you guys to know I really appreciate you and thanks for rooting for us on this journey and I'm always rooting for you too. I love hearing from you guys on Instagram in the comments down below. Dreams exist within our heart for a reason and I love being able to share mine with you and I love being able to hear yours as well and root for you. So thank you. Uh, thank you in advance for helping us get to 10K before 2021. And without further ado, let's get into this video. I try to include chapters in all my videos now so if there's a topic that you wanna see specifically specifically covered in this video, look for it in the chapters um, on the side here or down below in the show notes and you can click to exactly where you want to go. Welcome back. This is week three of checking in on our worms. There's nothing like seeing into a worm farm to really understand what's happening. So let's hop into the bins and I'll show you guys how my worms have been doing this winter so far. We've had highs of about 60 to 65, sometimes 70, maybe a little bit higher than that and lows of about 45 to like 38. So it is starting to get a little bit cooler at night. So I'm glad we're having this conversation. Let's check in on the worms together and we can see how the worm farm is doing. And here's my worm farm. Worm farm, YouTube, YouTube worm farm. You guys have met before, but maybe some of you guys are new. This is a system that I inherited from my friend, Steven over at Nature's Always Right. Bought it off him before he left to Tennessee to start his homestead. Great guy, great channel, check him out. Um, if you wanna see all of the videos related to this that I've done here on our modern homestead, definitely check out the info card as well. Take you guys through how I've set these up, how I've got it started, why I built this thing that I built for them, all that jazz. So. Anyway, this is my system and I use red wigglers, like I mentioned, they're a surface dwelling worm, which means I feed from the top. So I'm about to open up the bins and there's a couple things that I'm looking for. The first thing I'm looking for is, did they eat all of the food that I fed them last time? Super important because you don't want to overfeed your bins. I feel like I say that all the time now, but so many of you guys are still messaging me like, my bin's so wet, what do I do? Uh, stop feeding it so much wet food. Don't, don't overwater it, give it some browns. So that is also, Super important, don't overfeed your bins. It's a really common misconception that I also thought um, is that worms just eat food scraps, which in reality is not true. They need browns and greens. So we're gonna check on the greens from last time and see if those got eaten up. Then the next thing we're gonna look for is how are the browns doing? Are those being eaten up, decomposing, all that jazz? We're also gonna look for moisture. So if it looks a little dry or a little too wet, we'll make adjustments. To make adjustments to add moisture, we'll add more greens. To make adjustments to reduce moisture, we will add more browns, pretty simple. We're also gonna look for signs of life. So I also like to make sure that I can see that worms are still in there doing their thing, enjoying themselves. So I always like to just check on them, my little worm babies, and make sure they're still alive. And that's pretty much it. We'll go ahead and feed them, cover them up, call it good. So bin number one. Browns are decomposing, very few food scraps left, good moisture level, and we just found some sexually mature worms, which is also really good. Where are you guys? Hello. That's actually a really good sign, is that this is a sexually mature worm. You can tell by this little part right here. So it's getting ready to uh, have some babies and leave them in the worm farm for us, which we're gonna talk about in just a little bit. Ooh, you guys are growing up so fast. So another sexually mature worm, which is a great sign that they're happy and healthy and reproducing and getting ready to make more babies for us, which is really great. Bin number two, browns are breaking down. No signs of a whole lot of food waste left over. I already found some worms in here, but we'll find them together. Where are you guys? That's great. All right, you guys just keep doing your thing. Bin number three. Browns are breaking down, moisture feels good. Oh, real food scraps left over. 
Maybe just a little bit, but not bad. Haha, -ha, we found one. So hopefully he's got some friends. Number five. So you can see they're already producing a lot of castings, which is great. Last bin, bin number six. All right, so there you have it. There's all of the bins. We've officially checked all of them. I'm really happy with what I'm seeing. So here's the plan for feeding this week. Because most of the browns from last week still haven't broken down, what I'm going to do is kind of reuse those. And what I'll do is I'll peel back the browns layer, add some food, put back the browns layer, and then we'll cover that with soil and compost. And that will help everything start to break down more. I'm gonna go ahead and peel back the browns layers and add some food. On the worm menu this week, we've got leftover Thanksgiving pumpkin, and I thought I would just pop in here and invite you guys to join us for our new series, not related to worms, where we will be showing you guys cooking from scratch recipes and hopefully using a lot of produce from the garden. I know you guys want to see that, but unless you're subscribed, unless you've got the notification bell on, YouTube won't show you that because they understand me as a gardening channel and not a cooking channel yet. So definitely make sure you're subscribed for that so you can get all the latest from scratch recipes uh, right to your YouTube recommendation inbox. Now here is what the bins are looking like after adding the pumpkin. Again, don't want to add too much wet food. And then I just cover those back up with the brown from last week and add an additional layer of compost to help those browns break down, but also to offer some insulation. And because that mulch and compost is so dry, I did go ahead and wet these bins down just enough to kind of soak through, not sopping wet. Here's what they look like after adding that compost and mulch and a little bit of water. All right, so let's talk about our observations. We noticed some really cool things in those bins. First of all, the moisture was just right. We also saw lots of worms. Well, we saw a decent amount of worms, not a lot of worms, but a decent amount for winter. We'll talk more about that in just a second. We also saw that most of the food scraps had been eaten or decomposed, which is also really good. We saw that the browns hadn't really decomposed, so we went ahead and reused those as our browns for this week. Then we added some insulation. So you guys saw me add some compost and mulch. So really just use that as an additional layer for protection as insulation is necessary in winter. And we'll also talk about that in this next section, all about how do red wigglers survive in winter. So I've been worm farming for a couple years, started with absolutely no knowledge, made a lot of mistakes, and then when I finally felt like I was getting the hang of things, I started making these videos for you guys. Now, a lot of you guys have been calling me the worm queen, the worm goddess, and I so appreciate it. It's, it's really flattering, really, but you know, we're all here learning together, and so I want you to know, before we get too much farther in this video, I'm going to present a lot of ideas for you for your consideration, because really, you are the expert when it comes to your garden and your worms in your location. Something that's very important to keep in mind is I am in San Diego. I'm in zone 10 and that means a lot of different things for my garden. It means that water and mulching is more important. It means that I've got a more temperate climate for my worms. And so today's video is really going to be like a broad brushstroke over how do I care for my worms in winter? I know that you guys want to know. I want to answer this question as best as I possibly can. But again, it's one of those things where it's not a one size fits all. You'll have to sift through some of these ideas and see what makes sense for you and just give it a go. So most worms won't survive. They just won't. Um, some worms, there's like 3,000 something different kinds of species of worms. Some worms, like earthworms, will actually dig a cavern filled with mucus and just enough food to get through the winter and they'll stay warm in there and they'll basically hibernate 
until it's time to reemerge. So some worms do have a plan for winter. Other worms, like these surface dwelling red wigglers, not so much. Um, most worms are made up of mostly water, so they're probably going to freeze if it gets that cold here, which it really doesn't get that cold here, luckily. But let's say it did get to a freezing temperature point, they're basically going to turn into a little ice cube and die. <laughs> But mother nature is really interesting. And here's why I don't worry about it if that happens. And you know I love my worm babies, so don't think I'm being cruel. But it's okay if that happens because what did we see in the worm bins? We saw a lot of sexually mature worms, which means that we can expect a lot of cocoons coming soon. And because the conditions were right, because they're sexually maturing, because they're happy in there, I'm anticipating a lot of worm babies, a lot of cocoons. Now those cocoons might not hatch right away because like I said, that's part of mother nature's plan. Mo mother nature has this great plan where if something happens to mama and papa worm, there's a cocoon left over and it will be ready to hatch in the right time. So cocoons actually can withstand way greater temperature fluctuations than their mother and father worms. <laughs> so that's why it's a really good thing to be seeing sexually mature worms in the worm bins because it means that we're gonna have hopefully cocoons soon and they will be able to withstand any of those temperature fluctuations a lot better. Now let's talk about how you can maintain a worm farm in winter. Very simply, first option is cover your worm bins. You can insulate them with a nice thick blanket like this one. If you've got carpet leftovers, if you've got, you know, thick carpety wool type covers of any kind, go ahead and cover your worms. It will offer them some protection. Worms do have some natural protection when it comes to the mucus of those worm castings, as well as the moisture in the bins. So if you want to help them, maintain their insulation, give them a little bit more insulation, throw a blanket on them, throw some old carpeting on them, throw an old wool tarp or something over them, and it could help offer a little bit more insulation. Now let's talk about natural insulation. So you saw me, we reused those browns from last week. And then in addition to that, I added mulch, compost, old worm castings on top because that is extra insulation. Mulch, 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 mulch. And that will actually drastically reduce the fluctuations in temperatures compared to the, the, the wind. The air temperature compared to the ground temperature will be drastically different. So mulch is another way to offer natural insulation and a buffer from those fluctuations in temperature. Another idea is move it to a sunnier location. Move it to a side of your home or your apartment or wherever you may be that gets better sunlight or that gets better ambient heat. So we keep our worms on the north side of a south side wall, if that makes sense. So we're protecting them from the sun because that's more so my concern here in California is just not boiling these things to death, but you could theoretically move them on the other side or move them on the side of the house that I'm facing right now. And they're going to get more sun. And then the house is also going to absorb some of the heat as the sun radiates its solar energy into the stucco. And it's also going to offer some of um, ambient heat. So move it to a sunnier location, move it to a South facing location, move it to somewhere that is absorbing heat energy in the day that will help them through the chill of the night. Another idea for keeping them warm is actually using a heat source of some kind. Now I read online that a lot of people like to use uh, the aluminum rod type heaters for aquariums, that that is also an option. Me personally, that's more than I care to manage, not to be cruel to my worms, but honestly, if it dips so cold here that they end up dying, I'm going to be relying on the cocoons because the idea of adding another thing to manage and adding another heat source, it's just, it's more than I want to manage right now as we're getting ready for a baby and life's just a little hectic right now. So I don't want one more thing to manage, but let's say, you know, you really want to make sure that your worms are going to stay alive. That is an idea. You could offer them an actual heat source of some kind, like an aquarium heat situation. Uh, that is pretty common online. Google it. I'm sure you'll find somebody who's doing it the way you might like to try it. And last but not least, this is my favorite option. Just bring your worms inside. <laughs> bring your worms inside. One of my favorite Joel Salatin quotes goes something like, smelly farm is a mismanaged farm, something like that. Like essentially, if things are smelling bad when it comes to composting or keeping livestock, something is off. And so the flip side of that is if things smell good and they smell like dirt, well, then you're doing a good job. You know, a lot of you guys have been messaging me, oh, my husband, he doesn't want me to have worms inside or like, oh, you know, I'm just really concerned about worms inside. Just try it. Get a five gallon bucket, get a 
get a Dollar Tree garbage bin and drill some holes in the side and put it under your kitchen or your bathroom sink and just start experimenting with worms in a warm place. What is the worst that could go wrong? Okay, so maybe it gets a little moist. Maybe you have some fruit flies. Then you address that and you fix it by adding more browns. You know, it's a learning. There is a learning curve to these things. I did worms inside for like a year learned a lot of lessons, had a lot of fruit flies, realized I was overfeeding, adjusted, and I became a better worm farmer for it. So I know a lot of you guys have messaged me of like, oh no, my, my husband, he doesn't want me to have worms inside, or oh no, I'm scared of having worms inside. Like, why? What could go wrong? Okay, it gets a little stinky. It, maybe, maybe you make some mistakes, but you're learning, and that's a beautiful thing. All right, so just to recap, because that is how my brain works, and hopefully it helps you guys too. Worms can be maintained through the winter. Got into the worm bins and I showed you what my worm bins are looking like. A lot of good signs. We did see some signs of slowing down, which is fine to be expected in winter time. We also learned that we could insulate with either a giant wool uh, situation. What is this called? A blanket, a giant wool blanket. You could also add some insulation with mulch, soil, other worm castings, straw, hay, you can cover them to offer some more insulation and protection from heat fluctuations. We also talked about what to expect from your worms in winter. Things are gonna be a little bit slower, but mother nature knows what she's doing. And even if this generation of worms dies off, well, luckily we can hope. Signs of sexual maturity in these worms. I feel like I've said that so many times in this video. It's, it's, it's natural, it's a natural process worms sexually mature. Anyway, um, based on the fact that we see sexually mature worms, we can hope for cocoons and believe that we will have more worms here very soon, even if this generation doesn't make it. That's not me being cold hearted. It's just the reality of mother nature and her design when it comes to red wigglers and worm farming. Hopefully that helps you guys feel a little bit more encouraged that there are options for you. You know, whether it's insulation inside the bins, insulation outside of the bins, or just taking your bins into your shed, garage, or home, there are lots of ways you can maintain worms in winter. I hope this encourages you to start your worm farm, to keep worm farming, to keep learning, to keep growing, to keep making all the compost so that you can grow lots of delicious food. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys. If we're not connected on the blog, heyitsagoodlife.com, on Facebook or on Instagram, be sure to join the Good Life fam and grow with us as we learn and grow here on our modern homestead. It's great to be with you guys and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.